so here's the deal. We were going to go play. <sighs> Hung out with Brad and Andrew and uh, Joe Ingram. Had a couple drinks. <sighs> Playing tonight's probably not the smartest. So let's call it a night tonight. Let's see if we can get into uh, tomorrow. I know the last time you saw me, I was uh, down in the Arts District with uh, Andrew Busey, Brad, and Joey. <sighs> Had a couple uh, libations. We didn't play that night. We're playing tonight. Tonight. Aria Parking Garage, Level 6, Section C. Y'all gonna have to remind me because there's no way I'm gonna remember any of that. The dust is gone. I have a session of 1-3 and a few sessions of 2-5 under my belt at this point, so playing live poker is starting to feel more normal again. It's time to play a slightly bigger game, Bellagio's 5-10. Although 5-10 at the Bellagio is a step up in stakes from its 2-5 counterpart, it's still not a very deep game. The $1,500 cap locks everyone in at 150 big blind starting stacks, so there's some wiggle room, but it doesn't get too crazy. As a point of comparison, 2-5 at the win and 5-10 at Aria are both 300 big blind cap games with buy-ins of 1,500 and 3,000 respectively. So Bellagio 5-10, or maybe Aria 2-5 1,000 cap, makes sense for me as the next logical steps as I return. What I'm gonna say next might sound stupid to some. Others may understand it though. Either way, this is very true. After about half an orbit, I looked down at ace-jack offsuit on the button with one limper in front of me and decided to raise it to $40, which the limper calls. This is the first hand I've played at 510 in about a year. And for some reason, I really wanted the first hand to go really, really well. I had a feeling that if this first hand went well, the rest would fall into place. If I get put into a tough spot in this first hand, I thought I might start questioning my readiness and second-guessing every decision after that. So mentally, this was a pivotal hand. As far as flops go, I get a pretty decent one with Jack-8-7 with two clubs. The limp caller checks to me and I bet $50 into about 95 and he just quickly folds. I exhale and instantly feel a billion times better. Strange, right? Oh, and this question of readiness? was pretty much gone by the next orbit when I won a $1,900 pot with a River Day Sci flush. Sorry I didn't capture more of it. Lest you think all vloggers play hands well, let me introduce Exhibit 1. In this hand, a short stacked early position player has opened to $30 and another early position player has called. I look down at 6 7 of hearts and although this should probably be a fold, as the original Razor only started the hand with 300 bucks, and we aren't even close to deep enough for me to realize with this type of hand, I call. The small blind comes along and four of us see this flop. 10 of clubs, 7 of clubs, 2 of hearts. The small blind, original razor, and caller check, and now the action is on me. If there's any street to stab at this pot, it's this one. Middle pair, couple of backdoor draws, and position. Entering the pot was already a mistake, but here we are. And now it's possible I have the best hand, right? So I bet, um, 
Actually, I didn't. I checked. The turn pairs the deuce and the small blind and original raiser check again. Now the caller next to me bets 60. Okay. At this point, both my back doors are dead. There's really no reason to call this bet. He could easily have a 10 or some strange deuce. And continuing here via a call is purely just hoping to spike a 6 or a 7 for trips or two pair. A bad argument could be made for raising, but I won't make it. Easy fold. Psych, I call. And the other two fold. We're heads up now, and we see an eight of hearts on the river, and he checks. So here I am on the river with the most minimal of showdown value versus an opponent not showing much strength. A bet is in order, right? So what do we do? I check and lose, of course. Oh, you are so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. I know it's just a random distribution of cards, but it seemed like I got 10-8 offsuit on the button a lot. So I played 10-8 offsuit on the button a lot, and I won every one. Mid-session update, and it is um, windy. It's windy out there, so I'm back in some little nook. We're gonna keep this quick. 510 session at Bellagio is... Started well. It started really, really, really well. Since then, table's gotten super tight. I've just been stealing a lot. I lost a pretty big pot that you didn't see. Small blind versus big blind. Small blind raises, I three bet, he calls, he flops a flush, I flop top set, I lose a lot. Other than that, I think as we sit right now, I'm probably up maybe $100 and the table's still tight. So we're gonna try to make some things happen. Hopefully.
Not gonna lie, losing that large pot with a flop set of kings wasn't fun. The only thing to do about it now, though, was keep grinding. With the table being as tight as it was, I expanded my opening range a bit, and here you see me opening in middle position with 9-7 of diamonds in both the button and big blind calling. Opening with this hand, and being gifted the 9-5-8 flop definitely warrants a bet of the $50 variety when the big blind checks. The button folds, as does the big blind, and grinding has begun. I'm all in. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, nice hand. Grinding continues, and at this point we're about three hours past the myth session update, and the table makeup has changed a lot. It has morphed, as tables do, from super tight preflop to loose preflop and passive postflop. On the button here with ace jack offsuit with a middle position player on the loose side who has opened to $30 and a cutoff who is even looser has called. I decided to just call with the unsuited version of this hand. Most likely, would have three bet had I had that extra 3% of suitedness. The big blind decides to tag along as well. Pretty favorable flop in Jack 7 6 rainbow, and I bet $70 into about $120 when checked to. The only caller is a mid position opener, and from what I've seen, his range is pretty wide. He hasn't really been folding many flops after he enters the pot. The turn King of Hearts puts two hearts on the board and obviously isn't my favorite card. This is a pretty easy check back when he elects to check. The river pairs the king and the middle position opener now leads for $30. This is either a really, really bad blocking bet or a really, really small value bet. But either way, I'm not folding when I only need to be good here one out of every nine or so times. I call and apparently it was the blocking variety. I expose my hand and he mentions me having quote unquote a better jack and I take this one. Sometimes accidents just happen. The configuration for this hand is that the cutoff has opened to $30, the button has called, and I defend the big blind with 8-9 offsuit. Should I be defending this hand in this configuration? I could go either way. Honestly, I'm not sure, and that's why I'll be attending SolverWise Homeschool Training May 25th. Sign up now at SolverWiseAcademy.com. Damn. That was smooth how I slid that promo in there, wasn't it? 
Okay, anyway, back to the hand. The flop comes down, jack of clubs, ten of diamonds, three of hearts, so I flopped open-ended. Not bad. Staying in flow, I check to the opener who chooses to bet one third pot or $30 here. The button calls, and had I taken a second to think about it, I would have put in a pretty big check raise. However, I was getting tired, brain wasn't firing on all cylinders, and I was kinda in autopilot mode. That's not a good thing, so I just called. The turn eight of clubs gives me a lowly pair, and I check again. When both cutoff and button check, I start to think that maybe this pair is the best hand. Everything changes drastically on the river, however. The nine of hearts peels off. Ugh. Although I now have two pair, there are four doors straight out there. Someone holding a seven is unlikely, but a queen is not. I'm in check fold mode now, as I beat almost nothing that would bet this river. Surprisingly though, the river checks through, and I accidentally back into winning this pot. Runner, runner. Runner, runner, inspired by true events. In for 2100, out for 3096. So up almost the grand. It was good playing 510 again. We'll probably see some more of that. But it's damn near four in the morning now. So why am I heading to Bally's? Because it's damn near four in the morning. You may or you may not see any Valley's action. I don't know. We'll see. Time to take the uh, 20 minute-ish drive down to the strip. 25 minutes later, on the strip, in the Bellagio, in the parking garage, on the 2.5 and the 5.10 lists. Proceeded to play almost no hands for two hours. No hands, two hours. I mean an extended poker session. Oh boy. October 20 something. In for Bellagio, in at Bellagio for 24.